The Testament of Solomon Testament of Solomon, son of David, who reigned in Jerusalem, and subdued all the spirits of the air, of the earth, and under the earth. Through them he also accomplished all the magnificent works of the temple. This tells what their authorities are against men, and by what angels these demons are thwarted. Blessed are you, Lord God, who has given this authority to Solomon. Glory and power to you forever. Amen. Once upon a time, when the temple of the city of Jerusalem was being built and the artisans were working in it, Urnias the demon came as the sun was setting and took half of the wages and the provisions of the master workman's little boy. Also each day the demon was sucking the thumb of the boy's right hand, so the little boy who was much loved by me grew thin. But I, Solomon, interrogated the boy one day and said to him, Have I not loved you more than all the other artisans working in the temple of God? And have I not been paying you double wages and provisions? Why then are you growing thinner every day? And the boy said, I beg you, king, listen to what is happening to me. After we are dismissed from work on the temple of God, when the sun has set and I am resting, an evil spirit comes and makes off with half my pay and half my provisions. He also grabs my right hand and sucks my thumb. You can see that when my soul is in distress, my body grows thinner every day. When I, Solomon, heard these things, I went into the temple of God, and praising him night and day, begged with all my soul that the demon might be delivered into my hands, and that I might have authority over him. Then it happened that while I was praying to the God of heaven and earth, there was granted me from the Lord Sabaoth, through the archangel Michael, a ring which had a seal engraved on precious stone. He said to me, Solomon, son of David, take the gift which the Lord God, the highest Sabaoth, has sent to you. With it you shall imprison all the demons, both female and male. With their help you shall build Jerusalem when you bear this seal of God. Now I became so joyful that I continually sang hymns of praise to the God of heaven and earth and glorified him. The next day I ordered the child to come to me, and I gave it the seal to him. Then I said to him, At the moment the demon appears to you, fling this ring into his chest and say to him, Come, Solomon summons you, and come running back to me as fast as you can before he says anything that would frighten you. Now it happened that at his usual time the pesky demon, or Nias, came like a flaming fire to take the little boy's pay, as was his custom. According to Solomon's instructions to him, the little boy flung the ring into the chest of the demon and said to him, Come, Solomon summons you. And he started to take off running to Solomon as fast as he could go. But the demon screamed and said to the little boy, Why have you done this? Remove the ring and give it back to Solomon, and I shall give you all the silver and gold of the earth. But the little boy replied, As the Lord of God of Israel lives, I will never withstand you if I do not deliver you to Solomon. Then the little boy went and spoke to Solomon. King Solomon, I brought the demon to you just as you commanded me. Observe how he is standing bound in front of the gates outside crying out with a great voice to give me all the silver and gold of the earth, so that I would not deliver him to you. When I heard these things, I, Solomon, got up from my throne, and saw the demon shuddering and trembling with fear. I said to him, Who are you? What is your name? The demon replied, I am called Ornias. I said to him, Tell me, in which sign of the zodiac do you reside? And the demon replied, in Aquarius, I strangle those who reside in Aquarius because of their passion for women whose zodiacal sign is Virgo. Moreover, while in a trance, I undergo three transformations. Sometimes I am a man who craves the bodies of effeminate boys. When I touch them, they suffer great pain. Sometimes I become a creature with wings, flying up to the heavenly regions. Finally, I assume the appearance of a lion. In addition, I am descended from an archangel of the power of God, but I am thwarted by Uriel, the archangel. When I, Solomon, heard the archangel's name mentioned, I honored and glorified the God of heaven and earth. After I sealed the demon with my seal, I ordered him into the stone quarry to cut for the temple stones which had been transported by way of the Arabian Sea and dumped along the seashore. 
But being terrified to touch iron, he said to me, I beg you, King Solomon, let me have a measure of freedom, and I shall bring up all the demons. Since he did not want to be subject to me, I prayed that the archangel Uriel would come to help me. Immediately I saw the archangel Uriel descending to me from heaven. The angel commanded sea monsters to arise out of the sea, and he withered up their species and cast his fate to the ground. In this same way he also subjected the great demon Ornias to cut stones and to bring to completion the construction of the temple which I, Solomon, was in the process of building. Again I glorified the God of heaven and earth and commanded Ornias to come near according to his fate. Then I gave him the seal and said, Go and bring here to me the prince of demons. So Ornias took the ring and went up to Beelzebul and said to him, Come, Solomon summons you. But Beelzebul said to him, Tell me, who is this Solomon of whom you speak? Then Arnias flung the ring into the chest of Beelzebul and replied, Solomon the king summons you. Beelzebul cried out, like one who was burned from a great burning fire of flame, and when he had gotten up he followed Arnias under coercion and came to me. When I saw the prince of demons approaching, I glorified God and said, Blessed are you, Lord God Almighty, who has granted to your servant Solomon wisdom, the attendant of your thrones, and who has placed in subjection all the power of the demons. Then I interrogated him and said, Tell me who you are. The demon said, I am Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. I demanded that without interruption he sit next to me and explain the manifestations of the demons. Then he promised to bring me all the unclean spirits bound. Again, I glorified the God of heaven and earth, continually giving thanks to him. I now asked the demon if there were any female demons. When he replied that there were, I said, I wanted to see one. Beelzebul went off and showed me Onoscalus, who had a very beautiful form. Her body was that of a woman with a fair complexion, but her legs were like those of a mule. When she came to me, I said to her, Tell me who you are. She responded, My name is Onoscalus. I am a spirit which has been made into a body. I recline in a den on the earth. I make my home in caves. However, I have a many-sided character. Sometimes I strangle men. Sometimes I pervert them from their true natures. Most of the time, my habitats are cliffs, caves, and ravines. Frequently, I also associate with men who think of me as a woman, especially with those whose skin is honey-colored, for we are of the same constellation. It is also true that they worship my star secretly and openly. They do not know that they deceive themselves and excite me to be an evildoer all the more, but they want to obtain gold by remembering me, but I grant little to those who seriously worship me. Next I asked her how she came into being. She said, I was generated from an unexpected voice which is called the voice of the echo of a black heaven emitted in matter. I said to her, By what heavenly body do you travel? She replied, By the full moon, because by the moon I pass over more things. Then I said, What angel thwarts you? She responded, One that is also in you, king. Now, because I thought these remarks were meant in ridicule, I commanded the soldier to strike her, but she cried out in a loud voice, I say to you, king, by God's wisdom, I have been entrusted to your power. So I uttered the name of the Holy One of Israel, and commanded her to spin the hemp for the ropes used in the construction of the temple of God. She was sealed and bound in such a way that she was made powerless, so that she had to stand day and night to spin the hemp. I commanded another demon to be brought to me, and he and Beelzebul brought me an evil demon as Modius, bound. I asked him, Who are you? He scowled at me and said, And who are you? And I said to him, You dare to answer so arrogantly when you have been punished like this? He continued to give forth the same look and said to me, How should I answer you? You are the son of a man. But although I was born of a human mother, I am the son of an angel. 
It is impossible for one of heavenly origin to speak an arrogant word to one of earthly origin. My constellation is like an animal which reclines in its den in heaven. Some men call me the Great Bear, but others the offspring of a dragon. Moreover, a smaller constellation accompanies my constellation, for the high position and throne of my father is always in the sky. So do not ask me so many things, Solomon, for eventually your kingdom will be divided. This glory of yours is temporary. You have us to torture for a little while, then we shall disperse among human beings again, with the result that we shall be worshipped as gods, because men do not know the names of the angels who rule over us. When I, Solomon, heard this thing, I bound him with a greater curse. Then I ordered him to be flogged with a rod, and to defend himself by stating his name and reporting his activity. The demon stated, I am the renowned Asmodeus. I cause the wickedness of men to spread throughout the world. I am always hatching plots against newlyweds. I mar the beauty of virgins and cause their hearts to grow cold. I said to him, Is that all you do? He spoke again. I spread madness about women through the stars, and I have often committed a rash of murders. Then I adjured him by the name of the Lord Sabaoth, Asmodeus, for fear God, and tell me by which angel you are thwarted. The demon said, Raphael, the one who stands before God, but also a liver and a gall of a fish are smoking coals, of charcoal drives me away. Then I asked him again, saying, Do not hide anything from me, for I am Solomon, son of David. Tell me the name of the fish you fear. He replied, it is called the sheet fish. It is found in the rivers of Assyria, and it is hatched only there. I am also found in those parts. I said to him, Is there not something else about you, Asmodeus? He said to me, The power of God which binds me with unbreakable bonds by his seal knows that I have related what I have related to you is true. I beg you, King Solomon, do not condemn me to water. But I smiled and replied, As the Lord, the God of my father, lives, you shall have irons to wear, and you shall mold clay for all the vessels of the temple, eliminating the cost of the mold. And then I ordered ten water jars to be made available, and I commanded him to be encircled by them. Though he complained bitterly, the demon cried out, carried out all things which he had been commanded. Asmodeus did this because he also had knowledge of the future. So I, Solomon, glorified God who gave me this authority. Then, taking the liver and the gall of the fish along with the branch of storax, I lit a fire under Asmodeus because he was powerful and his voice was thwarted, as well as a tooth full of venom. Then I summoned Beelzebul to appear before me again. When he was seated, I thought it appropriate to ask him, Why are you alone the prince of demons? He replied, because I am the only one left of the heavenly angels who fell. I was the highest ranking angel in heaven, the one called Beelzebul. There also accompanied me another ungodly angel whom God cut off and now imprisoned here. He holds in his power the race of those bound by me in Tartarus. He is being nurtured in the Red Sea. When he is ready, he will come in triumph. I said to him, What are your activities? He replied, I bring destruction by means of tyrants. I cause the demons to be worshipped alongside men, and I arouse desire in holy men and select priests. I bring about jealousies and murders in a country, and I instigate wars. Then I said to him, Bring to me the one you said is being nurtured in the Red Sea, he retorted. I will bring no one back to you, but there will come a certain demon whose name is Ephippas, who will bind him and bring him up out of the abyss? I responded, Tell me why he is in the abyss of the Red Sea and what his name is. He, however, said, Do not ask me. You are not able to learn that from me. He will come to you because I too am with you. So I said to him, Tell me in which star you reside. The one called by men, the evening star. He said, then I said, 
Tell me, which angel thwarts you? The Almighty God, he replied. He is called by the Hebrews, Patika, the one who descends from the heights. He is called by the Greeks, Emmanuel. I am always afraid of him and trembling. If anyone adjures me with an oath called the L.O.I., a great name for his power, I disappear. Now when I saw him and heard these things, I commanded him to cut blocks of Theban marble. As he was beginning to cut, all the demons cried out with a loud voice, because he was their king, Beelzebul. Nevertheless, I, Solomon, persisted in interrogating him, saying, If you wish to obtain a release, inform me about heavenly things. Beelzebul replied, Listen, king, if you burn oil of mirror, frankincense, and bulbs of the sea, along with spikenard and saffron, and light seven lamps during an earthquake, you will strengthen your house. And if being ritually clean, you light them at the crack of dawn, just before the sun comes up, you will see the heavenly dragons and the way they wriggle along and pull the chariot of the sun. When I, Solomon, heard these things, I rebuked him and said, Be silent, and continue cutting marble just as I ordered you. After I praised God, I, Solomon, requested the presence of another demon, and he appeared before me. He was burying his face on the air high above, and he remained, in the remaining part of his body was crawling along like a little snail. Suddenly he broke through a large contingent of soldiers, raised up a blustering cloud of dust from the earth, transported it upward, and hurled it against me many times, while I watched in amazement. I exclaimed, What do we have here? But this continued for a long time. When I stood up, I spat on the ground at that spot, and I sealed him with the ring of God. As a result, the moving air stopped. Then I asked him, saying, Who are you? After he had stirred up another cloud of dust, he answered me, What do you want, King Solomon? I answered him, Tell me what you are called. Also, I want to interrogate you. Thus, I give thanks to God who instructs me as to how to respond to their evil plots. So the demon said to me, I am called Lix Tetrax. What is your activity, I queried. He responded, I create divisions among men. I make whirlwinds. I start fires. I set fields on fire, and I make households non-functional. Usually I carry on my activity in the summertime. If I get a chance, I slither in under the corners of the house during the day or night. I am the direct offspring of the Great One. I asked him, in which constellation do you reside? He replied, Toward the very tip of the horn of the moon when it is found in the south. There is my star. Therefore I was assigned to draw out the fever which strikes for a day and a half. As a result, many men, when they see this, pray about the day and a half fever, invoking these three names, Baltala, Thalal, Melkal, and I heal them. Then I, Solomon, said to him, but when you wish to do evil, who grants you the power? He replied, The angel by whom also the day and a half fever is stopped. Finally I asked him, By what name are you thwarted? He responded, The name of the archangel Azael. Then I placed my seal on the demon and, and commanded him to pick up stones and hurl them up to the heights of the temple for the workmen. Compelled, the demon complied with his orders. Again I glorified God, who gave me this authority, and I commanded another demon to appear before me. There came seven spirits up, bound up together, hand and foot, fair and form and graceful. When I, Solomon, saw them, I was amazed and asked them, Who are you? They replied, We are heavenly bodies, rulers of the world of darkness. The first said, I am deception. The second said, I am strife. The third said, I am fate. The fourth said, I am distress. The fifth said, I am error. The sixth said, I am power. The seventh said, I am the worst. Our stars in heaven look small, but we are named like gods. We change our position together and we live together, sometimes in Lydia, sometimes in Olympus, 
sometimes on the great mountain. Then I saw them and continued questioning them, beginning with the first. Tell me what you do, he responded. I am deception. I plot deception, and I devise the most evil heresies. But there is one who thwarts me, the angel Lamichio. The second said, I am strife. I cause strife by making available clubs, pellets, and swords, my implements of war. But I have an angel who thwarts me, Barukael. Likewise, the third said, I am called fate. I cause every man to fight in battle rather than make peace honorably with those who are winning. But why am I talking so much? There is an angel who thwarts me, Marmaroth. The fourth distressed said, I cause men to lack moderation. I divide them into factions. I keep them separated. Since strife follows in my footsteps, I set men against each other and do many other similar things to them. But why am I talking so much? There is an angel who thwarts me, the great Bothuel. The fifth said, I am error, King Solomon, and I am leading you into error, and I led you into error when I made you kill your brothers. I lead people into error by hunting for graves, and I teach them how to dig them up. I lead men's minds astray from religion, and I do many other bad things. However, there is an angel who thwarts me, Uriel. Likewise, the sixth said, I am power. I raise up tyrants. I depose kings, and I grant power to all those who are enemies. There is an angel who thwarts me, Astaroth. Similarly, the seventh said, I am the worst, and you, king, I shall harm when I order you to be bound with the bounds of Artemis, because these things affect you. You have desire like a beloved one, but to me that is a desire which corresponds to myself, which is wisdom. For if anyone is wise, he will not follow in my steps. But I, Solomon, when I heard these things, sealed them with the ring of God, and commanded them to dig the foundation of the temple. It stretched out 250 cubits in length. So all the things which were commanded them were accomplished. Again I asked that other demons visit me in succession, and there was brought to me a demon, a man who had all his limbs but no head. I said to him, Tell me who you are and what you are called. The demon replied, I am called Myrrh, for I devour heads, wishing to get a head for myself, but I do not consume enough. I long for a head to do exactly what you do, king. When I heard these things, I stretched out my hand against his chest and put my seal on him. Then the demon jumped up, tore himself loose, and muttered, saying, Woe is me! How did I fall in with a traitor, Ornias? I do not see. So I said to him, How is it possible for you to see? He replied, Through my breast. When I, Solomon, heard the delight in his voice, I wished to learn more, so I asked him, How is it possible for you to speak? He responded, My voice is taken over the voices from many men, for I have closed up the heads of those young men who are called dumb. When infants are ten days old, and if one cries during the night, I become a spirit, and I rush in and attack the infant through his voice. What is more, my visit to premature infants is harmful. My strength happens to reside in my hands. That is, like that which takes place at an executioner's block. I grab hold of heads, cut them off, and attach them to myself. Then, by the fire which is continually burning in me, I consume them through my neck. I am the one who inflames the limbs, inflicts the feet, and produces festering sores. It is by a fiery flash of lightning that I am thwarted. I ordered him to stay with Beelzebul until the time when a friend might arrive. Then I ordered another demon to make his presence before me. He came before me in the form of a gigantic dog, and he spoke to me in a loud voice. Hail, O King Solomon. I was astounded and said to him, Who are you, dog? He said, You suppose that I am a dog? But before your time, king, I was a man. 
I accomplished many unlawful deeds in the world, and I was so extremely strong that I restrained the stars of heaven, and now I am preparing more evil works. Consequently, I deceive men who follow my star closely, and I lead them into stupidity. I also subdue the hearts of men through their throats, and in this way I destroy them. I said to him, What is your name? He replied, Scepter. Then I said to him, What is your activity, and why do you seem to me to be so prosperous? The demon said, Turn over your manservant to me, and I shall spirit him off to the place in the mountains, where I shall show him an emerald stone shaken loose from its foundation. With it you will adorn the temple of God. When I heard these things, I immediately ordered my household servant to accompany him, and to take the ring bearing God's seal with him. I told him, Go with him, and whoever shows you the emerald stone, seal him with the ring. Observe the place in detail, and bring the ring back to me. So when the demon went out and showed him the emerald stone, the household servant sealed him with the ring of God, and brought the emerald stone back to me. I then decided to have the two demons, the headless one and the dog, bound, and to request that the stone be carried about day and night, like, as it were, a light for the working artisans. Next I extracted that moving stone, from that moving stone, 200 shekels for the supports of the altar, for the stone was shaped like a leek. Then I, Solomon, when I had glorified the Lord God, locked up the treasure chest containing the stone and commanded the demons to cut marble for the construction of the temple. Also I asked the dog in private, By which angel are you thwarted? He replied, By the great Priathos. I commanded another demon to come before me, he came roaring like a stately lion, and he took his place and questioned by me by word. King Solomon, I have this particular form, and am a spirit which can never be bound. I am one who sneaks in and watches over all who are lying ill with a disease, and I make it impossible for man to recover from his taint. I have another authority. I involve the legions of demons subject to me, for I am the places where they are when the sun is setting. The name for all demons which are under me is Legion. And then I asked him, What is your name? He replied, The lion-shaped demon, an Arab by descent. So I said to him, How are you and your demons thwarted? That is, who is your angel? The demon said, If I tell you his name, I place not only myself in chains, but also the Legion of demons under me. So I said to him, I adjure you by the name of the great God Most High. By what name are you and your demons thwarted? The demon said, By the name of the one who at one time submitted to suffer many things at the hands of men, whose name is Emmanuel, but now he has bound us and who will come to torture us by driving us into the water at the cliff. As he moves about, he is conjured up by means of three letters. So I sentenced his legion to carry wood from the grove of trees, and then I sentenced the lion-shaped one to, to saw it up as kindling with his claws, and to throw it under the perpetually burning kiln. Now when I had worshipped the God of Israel, I ordered another demon to come forward. This time a three-headed dragon with an awful skin appeared before me. I asked him, Who are you? He said, I am a three-pronged spirit one who overpowers by means of three deeds. In the wombs of women I blind children. I also turn their ears around backwards and make them dumb and deaf. Finally, I strike men against the body and I make them fall down, foam at the mouth and grind their teeth. But there is a way in which I am thwarted, namely by the sight which is marked place of the skull. For there an angel of the wonderful counselor foresaw that I should suffer and he will dwell publicly on the cross. He is the one who will thwart me, being the one among angels by whom I am subject. But at the place with which he ascended, King Solomon, he will erect a dark pillar formed on the air after Ephipas has brought gifts from the Red Sea, from inside Arabia, and the foundation of the temple which you have begun to build. 
King Solomon, there is hidden away much gold. Dig it up and confiscate it. So I, Solomon, sent my servant and found that it was just as the demon told me. After I sealed him with the ring, I praised God. Next I said to him, Tell me what you are called. The demon replied, Head of the dragons. So I ordered him to make bricks for the temple of God. Then I ordered another demon to appear before me. There came before me one who had the shape of a woman, but she possessed as one of her traits the form of one with disheveled hair. I said to her, Who are you? She replied, And who are you? Or what need is there for you to inquire about the sorts of deeds I do? But if you want to inquire, go to the royal chambers, and after you have washed your hands, sit again on your throne and ask me, and then you will learn, king, who I am. When I had done this and had sat on my throne, I, Solomon, asked her and said, Who are you? She replied, O Bizuth, I do not rest at night, but travel around the world, visiting women and divining the hour when they give birth. I search for them and strangle their newborn infants. I do not go through a single night without success. You are not able to give me orders. I even make the rounds and go into the remotest areas. Otherwise, my work is limited to killing newborn infants, injuring eyes, condemning mouths, destroying minds, and making bodies feel pain. When I, Solomon, heard these things, I was amazed. I did not look at her shape. For her body was darkness, and her hair savage. I, Solomon, said to her, Tell me, evil spirit, by what angel are you thwarted? She said to me, By the angel Raphael, when the women give birth, write my name on a piece of papyrus, and I shall flee from them to the other world. When I heard these things, I ordered her to be bound by the hair, and to be hung up in front of the temple in order that all those sons of Israel who passed through and see might glorify the God of Israel, who had given me this authority. I again ordered another demon to appear before me. There came to me one who was in the form of a wallowing dragon, having the limbs of a dragon, and wings on its back, but the face and feet of a man. When I saw him, I became amazed and said to him, who are you, and from where have you come? The spirit said to me, This is the first time I have stood before you, King Solomon. A spirit made a god among men, but thwarted by the seal which was given to you by God. Well, I am the so-called winged dragon. I do not copulate with many women, but with only a few who have beautiful bodies, who possess a name of Tuxilu of this star. I rendezvous with them in the form of a winged spirit, copulating with them through their buttocks. One woman I attacked is bearing a child, and that which is born from her becomes Eros, because it could not be tolerated by men that women perished. This is my activity. Suppose then that I alone am content while the rest of the demons troubled by you, being downcast should speak the whole truth. They will cause the stack of wood about to be gathered by you for construction in the temple to be consumed by fire. As the demon was saying these things, suddenly the breath coming out of his mouth set the forest of Lebanon on fire and burned up all the wood which was going into the temple of God. Now I, Solomon, saw what the spirit had done, and I was amazed. After I glorified God, I asked the demon -shaped, dragon-shaped demon, saying, Tell me, by what angel are you thwarted? He replied, By the great angel who is seated in the second heaven, whose name is called in Hebrew, Bazazoth. When I, Solomon, heard these things and invoked his angel, I condemned him to cut marble for the construction of the temple of God. Then I praised God and commanded another demon to come before me. Again there came before me a spirit who had the shape of a woman, but on her shoulders were two separate heads with arms. I asked her, Tell me what you, who you are. She answered, I am Inepsigos, but I am called by countless names. Then I said to her, By what angel are you thwarted? She responded to me, What are you after? What do you want? I can change my appearance, first being taken for a goddess, 
and then becoming one who has some other shape. In this regard, do not expect to know all things about me, but because you are here in my presence, listen to this. I hover near the moon, and because of this I assume three forms. At times I am conjured up as Kronos by the wise men. At other times I descend around those who bring me down and appear in another form. The capacity of the heavenly body is invincible, incalculable, and impossible to thwart. At any rate, changing into three different forms, I also descend and become like what you see. I am thwarted by the angel Rathanael, who takes his seat in the third heaven. On account of this, therefore, I say to you, this temple cannot contain me. Accordingly, when I, Solomon, had prayed to my God and invoked the angel Raphanael, about whom he spoke, I made use of the seal and sealed her down with a triple link chain, and as I bound her down, I made use of the seal of God. And then the evil spirit prophesied to me, saying, You are doing these things to us now, King Solomon, but after a period of time your kingdom shall be divided. And still a later time this temple shall be destroyed, and all Jerusalem shall be demolished by the kings of the Persians and Medes and Chaldeans. Also the implements of this temple which you are making shall serve other gods. Along with these events also all the vessels in which you have entrapped us shall be broken in pieces by the hands of men. Then we shall come forth with much power, and we shall be scattered here and there throughout the world. We will lead astray all the inhabited world for a long time until the Son of God is stretched upon the cross. For there has not yet arisen a king like him, one who thwarts all of us, whose mother shall not have sexual intercourse with a man, who holds such authority over the spirits except that one, the one whom the first devil shall seek to tempt, but shall not be able to overcome, the letters of whose names add up to 644. He is Emmanuel. Because of this, King Solomon, your time is evil, your years are short, and your kingdom shall be given to your servant. When I, Solomon, heard these things, I glorified God. Though I was amazed at the defense of the demons, I distrusted them and did not believe the things which were said by them until they occurred. But when they happened, then I understood, and at my death I wrote this testament to the sons of Israel, and I gave it to them, that they might know the powers of the demons and their forms, as well as the names of the angels by which they are thwarted. When I had glorified the God of Israel, I commanded the Spirit to be bound up with unbreakable bonds. When I had praised God, I commanded another spirit to appear before me. There came before me another demon, who had the form of a horse in front and a fish in the back. He said in a great voice, King Solomon, I am a cruel spirit of the sea. I rise up and come in the open seas with the sea, and I trip up the greater number of men who sail on it. I raise myself up like a wave, and being transformed, I come against the ships. For this is my activity, to receive beneath the sea treasures and men. For I raise myself up, take men, and hurl them under the sea. So I am always lusting, lusting after their bodies. But until now I have been casting the treasures out of the sea. However, since Beelzebul, the ruler of the spirits of the air and the earth and beneath the earth, gives advice about the activities with respect to each one of us, I therefore came up out of the sea to have some consultation with him. But I also have another reputation and activity. I change myself into waves, come up from the sea and show myself to men. They call me Cunapegos, because I change myself into a man. The name is true to me. Moreover, I cause a type of seasickness when I pass into men. So when I came in for a consultation with the ruler, Beelzebul, he bound me up and delivered me into your hands. Now I am standing before you, because of not having water for two or three days, my spirit is ceasing from speaking to you. So I said to him, Tell me, by what angel are you thwarted? He replied, By IMF. Then I ordered him to be cast into a broad, flat bowl, and ten receptacles of seawater to be poured over it. I fortified the top side all around with marble, and I unfolded and spread asphalt pitch and hemp rope around over the mouth of the vessel. 
When I had sealed it with the ring, I ordered it to be stored away in the temple of God. I ordered another spirit to appear before me. There came a spirit having the shadowy form of a man and gleaming eyes. I asked him, saying, Who are you? He replied, I am a lecherous spirit of a giant man who died in a massacre in the age of giants. So I said to him, Tell me what you accomplish on earth and where you make your dwelling. He replied, My home is in inaccessible places. My activity is this. I seat myself near dead men in the tombs, and at midnight I assume the form of the dead man. If I seize anyone, I immediately kill him with the sword. If I should not be able to kill him, I cause him to be possessed by a demon, and to gnaw his own flesh to pieces, and the saliva of his jowls to flow down. So I said to him, Fear the God of heaven and earth, and tell me by what angel you are thwarted. He replied, he who is about to return as Savior thwarts me. If his mark is written on one's forehead, it thwarts me, because I am afraid of it. I quickly turn and flee from him. This is the sign of the cross. When I heard these things, I, Solomon, locked up the demon just like the other demons. Then I commanded another demon to appear before me. There came to me thirty-six heavenly bodies, their heads like formless dogs. But there were among them those who were in the form of humans, or of bulls, or of dragons, with faces like the birds, or the beasts, or the sphinx. When I, Solomon, saw these beings, I asked them, saying, Well, who are you? All at once, with one voice, they said, We are thirty-six heavenly bodies, the world rulers of the darkness of this age. But you, king, are not able to harm us or to lock us up. But since God gave you authority over all the spirits of the air, the earth, and the regions beneath the earth, we have also taken our place before you like the other spirits. Then I, Solomon, summoned the first spirit and said to him, Who are you? He replied, I am the first decan of the zodiac, and I am called Ruax. I cause heads of men to suffer pain, and I cause their temples to throb. Should I hear only Michael imprison Ruax. I retreat immediately. The second said, I am called Barsafel because I cause men to reside in my time period to have pains on the sides of their heads. Should I hear Gabriel imprison Barsafael, I retreat immediately. The third said, I am called Artosael. I do much damage to the eyes. Should I hear Uriel imprison Artosael, I retreat immediately. The fourth said, I am called Oropel. I attack throats, resulting in sore throats and mucus. Should I hear Raphael imprison Oropel, I retreat immediately. The fifth said, I am called Kairosanandalan. I cause the ears to have obstructions. If I should hear Uriel imprison Cairo Oxidanalon, I retreat immediately. The sixth said, I am called Spendonael. I produce tumors of the parotid gland and tetanic recurvation. If I hear Sabael imprison Spendonalon, I repeat immediately. The seventh said, I am called Spendor. I weaken the strength of the soldiers, and deaden the nerves of the hand, and I make limbs paralyzed. If I hear, Ariel imprisons Fandor, I retreat immediately. The eighth said, I am called Belbel. -Bel. I pervert the hearts of the minds of men. If I hear, Kadael imprison Belbel, -Bel, I retreat immediately. The ninth said, I am called Kurtael. I send forth colics into the bowels. If I should hear Eoth, imprison Kurtael, I retreat immediately. The tenth said, I am called Metathiox. I cause pains in the kidneys. If I hear Adonael, imprison Metathiox, I retreat immediately. The eleventh said, 
I am called Katani Kotao. I release families, fights, and feuds in homes. If anyone wishes to make peace, let him write on seven laurel leaves the names of those who thwart me. Angel, Ie, Io, Sabaoth, in prison, Katano Kotao. And when he has soaked the laurel leaves in water, let him sprinkle his house with the water, and I retreat immediately. The twelve said, I am called Sathorael. I put dissensions into the minds of men, and I delight when I cause them to stumble. If anyone writes down these words, Aya, Ayo, sons of Sabaoth, and wears them around his neck, I retreat immediately. The thirteenth said, I am called Phobothel. I cause loosenings of the tendons. If I hear Adonai, I retreat immediately. The fourteenth said, I am called L'Oreal. I bring on chills and shivering and sore throat. If I hear Ajax, do not stand fast. Do not be fervent, because Solomon is fairer than eleven fathers. I retreat immediately. The fifteenth said, I am called Subalti. I unleash shivering and numbness. If I only hear Rizoel, imprison Subelti, I retreat immediately. The sixteenth said, I am called Catrox. I inflict incurable fevers on men. If anyone wants to regain health, let him pulverize coriander and rub it on his lips, saying, I adjure you by Zeus, retreat from the image of God, and I retreat immediately. The seventeenth said, I am called Europa. I sit on the stomach of man and cause convulsions. In the bath and on the street I find a man and make him fall to the ground. Whoever says into the right ear of the afflicted for the third time, Iuda Zizabau, you see, makes me retreat. The eighteenth said, I am called Modebel. I separate wife from husband. If anyone writes the names of the eight fathers and places them on the doorways, I retreat immediately. The nineteenth said, I am called Mardero. I inflict incurable fevers. Write my name in some such way in a house, and I retreat immediately. The twentieth said, I am called Rix Nathotho. I locate myself in the knees of men. If anyone writes on a piece of papyrus, for no biel, I retreat immediately. The twenty-first said, I am called Rix Aloth. I produce the croup in infants. If anyone writes Rarideris and carries it, I retreat immediately. The twenty-second said, I am called Rix Audumioth. I inflict heart pain. If anyone writes, Ryuth, I retreat immediately. The twenty-third said, I am called Rix Mandando. I cause the kidneys to suffer pain. If anyone writes, Ioth, Uriel, I retreat immediately. The twenty-fourth said, I am called Rix Actonme. I cause the ribs to suffer pain. If anyone writes on a piece of wood from a ship which has run aground, Marmayoth of mist, I retreat immediately. The twenty-fifth said, I am called Rix Anathereth. I send gas and burning up into the bowels. If I hear Arara Arare, I retreat immediately. The twenty-sixth said, I am called Rix the Anutha. I make off with minds and alter hearts. If anyone writes Kalazael, I retreat immediately. The twenty-seventh said, I am called Rix Axibuth. I cause men to suffer from diarrhea and hemorrhoids. If anyone adjures me in pure wine and gives it to the one who is suffering, I retreat immediately. The twenty-eighth said, I am called Rex Hapax. I am Nish Insomnia. If anyone writes, Coke, Fadismos, 
and wears it down from the temples. I retreat immediately. The 29th said, I am called Rix Anuster. I unleash hysteria and cause pains in the bladder. If anyone mashes up the seeds of laurel into pure oil and massages the body with it, saying, I adjure you by Marmayoth, I retreat immediately. The thirtieth said, I am called Rix Fakasurath. I bring on long-term illnesses. If anyone puts salt into olive oil and massages his sickly body with it, saying, Cherubim, Seraphim, help me, I retreat immediately. The thirty-first said, I am called Rix Alureth. In the case of swallowing fish bones, if anyone puts a bone from his fish into the breasts of one who is suffering, I retreat immediately. The 32nd said, I am called Rix Akuthan. I detach tendons. If I hear Adonai Malthi, I retreat immediately. The 33rd said, I am called Rix Akunath because I cause sore throat and tonsillitis. If anyone writes on ivy leaves, lay Kurogos, heaping up on them in a pile, I retreat immediately. The 34th said, I am called Rix Antoth. I cause jealousies and squabbles between those who love each other, but the letters Alpha and Beta written down thwart me. The 35th said, I am called Rix Phineoth. I cause cast the evil eye on every man, but the much suffering eye, when inscribed, thwarts me. The thirty sixth said, I am called Rix Mayanath. I hold a grudge against the body. I demolish houses. I cause the flesh to rot. If anyone writes on the front entrance of his house as follows Melto, Ardad, Anaath, I flee from that place. When I saw them and heard these things, I glorified the God of heaven and earth, and I ordered them to bear water. Then I prayed to God that the thirty-six demons who continually plague humanity go to the temple of God. Then I, Solomon, was honored by all men under heaven, for I was building the temple of God, and my kingdom was running well. All the kings were coming to me to observe the temple of God that I was building, and they supplied me with gold and silver, and brought in bronze, iron, lead, and wood for the temple furnishings. Among them, Sheba, queen of the south, who was a witch, came in with much arrogance and bowed down before me. Now it happened that one of the artisans, a dignified man, threw himself down before me, saying, King Solomon, son of David, have mercy on me, an elderly man. I said to him, Tell me, old man, what do you want? He replied, I beg you, king, I have a son, my only son, and every day he does terribly violent things to me, striking me in the face and head and threatening to send me to a terrible death. Because he did this, I came forward to request a favor, that you will avenge me. When I heard these things, I commanded his son to be brought before me. When he came, I said to him, Do you admit to this? He replied, I did not become so filled with rage, king, that I struck my father with my hand. Be kind to me, O king, for it is not right to pay attention to such a story and to his distress. Therefore, when I, Solomon, heard the young man, I summoned the elderly man to come and reconsider. But he did not want to come and said, Let him be put to death. Then, noticing that the demon Orion Ornias was laughing, I became very angry that he would laugh in my presence. Dismissing the young man, I ordered Ornias to come out, and I said to him, Cursed one, did you laugh at me? He replied, I beg you, king, I did not laugh because of you, but because of the wretched old man and the miserable young man, his son, because after three days he will die. See, the old man has the intent of doing away with him in an evil manner. I said, Does he really have such an intent? The demon said, Yes, king. Then I commanded the demon to go away, and the old man and his son to come back, and I ordered them to become friends. Then I said to the elderly man, In three days bring your son back to me. When they had prostrated themselves before me, they departed. Then I ordered Ornias to be brought to me again, and I said to him, Tell me, how do you know that the young man will die in three days? 
He responded, We demons go up to the firmament of heaven, fly around among the stars, and hear the decisions which issue from God concerning the lives of men. The rest of the time we come, and being transformed, cause destruction, whether by domination, or by fire, or by sword, or by chance. I asked him, Tell me then, how do you, being demon, are able to ascend into heaven? He replied, Whatever things are accomplished in heaven are accomplished in the same way also on earth, for the principalities and authorities and the powers fly around and are considered worthy of entering heaven. But we who are demons are exhausted from not having a way station from which to ascend or on which to rest, so we fall down like leaves from the trees, and the men who are watching think that stars are falling from heaven. That is not true, King. Rather, we fall because of our weakness, and since there is nothing on which to hold, we are dropped like flashes of lightning to the earth. We burn cities down and set fields on fire, but the stars of heaven have their foundations laid in the firmament. When I saw him and heard these things, I commanded the demon to be kept under guard for five days. After five days I summoned the old man, but he did not want to come. Then when he did come, I saw that he was depressed and mourning. I said to him, Where is your son, old man? He replied, I have become childless, O king, and without hope I keep watch at the grave of my son. Upon hearing these things and knowing that the things which were spoken to me by the demon were true, I glorified the God of heaven and earth. Now when Sheba, the queen of the south, saw the temple I was building, she thought it was marvelous and contributed ten thousand copper shekels. She entered the inner part of the temple and saw the altar the cherubim and seraphim overshadowing the mercy seat, the two hundred gems glittering from the various ornaments of the lamps, and lamps also decorated with emeralds, hyacinth, and lapis lazuli. She also saw the silver, bronze, and gold vessels, and the bases of the pillars entwined with bronze, wrought in the pattern of a chain. Finally, she saw the bronze sea, which supported, was supported by thirty-six bulls, and all were busy working in the temple of pay amounting to one gold talent to part from the demons. The king of Arabia, Adarkes, sent a letter containing the following. King of Arabia, Adarkes, to King Solomon, greetings. I have heard about the wisdom which has been granted to you that, being a man from the Lord, there has been given to you understanding about all the spirits of the air, the earth, and beneath the earth. There still exists a spirit in Arabia. Early in the morning a fresh gust of wind blows until the third hour. It is a terrible blast that kills man and beast, and no counterblast is able ever able ever to withstand the demon. I beg you, therefore, since this spirit is like a wind, do something wise according to the wisdom which has been given to you by the Lord your God, and decide to send a man who is able to bring it under control. Then we shall belong to you, King Solomon. I and all my people and all my land and all Arabia will be at peace if you carry out this act of vengeance for us. Consequently, we implore you, do not ignore our prayer and do not become our Lord for all time. Farewell, my Lord, as ever. After I, Solomon, read this letter, I folded it, gave it to my servant, and said to him, After seven days, remind me of this letter. So Jerusalem was being built and the temple was moving toward completion. Now there was a gigantic cornerstone which I wished to place at the head of the corner to complete the temple of God. All the artisans and all the demons who were helping came to the same location to bring the stone and mount it at the end of the temple, but they were not strong enough to budge it. When seven days had passed, I remembered the letter of the king of Arabia. I summoned my servant boy and said to him, Load up your camel, take a leather flask and this seal and go up to Arabia to the place where the spirit is blowing. Then take hold of the wine skin and place the ring in front of the neck of the flask against the wind. As the flask is being filled with air, you will discover that it is the demon who is filling it up. Carefully then, tie up the flask tightly, and when you have sealed it with the ring, load up the camel and come back here. Be off now, with blessings. Then the boy obeyed the orders and went to Arabia. Now the men from the region doubted whether it was possible to bring the evil spirit under control. Nonetheless, before dawn, the house servant got up and confronted the spirit of the wind. 
He put the flask on the ground and placed the ring on its mouth. The demon entered the flask and inflated it. Yet the boy stood firm. He bound up the mouth of the flask in the name of the Lord Sabaoth, and the demon stayed inside the flask. To prove that the demon had been overcome, the boy remained three days, and when the spirit did not blow any longer, the Arabs concluded that he really had trapped the spirit. Then he loaded the flask on the camel. The Arabs sent the boy on his way with gifts and honors, shouting praises to God, for they were left in peace. Then the boy caught, brought in the spirit and put it in the foremost part of the temple. The following day I, Solomon, went into the temple, for I was very worried about the cornerstone. Suddenly the flask got up, walked for seven steps, and fell down on its mouth before me. I was amazed that even though the demon was entrapped in the flask, he had the power to walk around, and I ordered him to get up. Panting, the flask arose and stood up, and then I asked him, saying, Who are you? From inside, the spirit said, I am the demon called Ephipas, and I live in Arabia. I said to him, By what angel are you thwarted? He said, By the one who was going to be born from a virgin and be crucified by the Jews. Then I said to him, What can you do for me? He responded, I am able to move mountains, to carry houses from one place to another, and overthrow kings. I said to him, if you have the power, lift this stone into the beginning of the corner of the temple. But he responded, I will raise not only this stone, king, but with the aid of the demon who lives in the Red Sea, I will also lift up the pillar of air which is in the Red Sea, and you shall see, set it up where you wish. When he had said these things, he went in underneath that stone, lifted it up, went up the flight of steps carrying the stone, and inserted it into the end of the entrance of the temple. I, Solomon, being excited, exclaimed, Truly the scripture which says, It was the stone rejected by the builders that became the keystone has now been fulfilled, and so forth. Again I said to him, Go, bring to me the one you said would help lift up the pillar which is in the Red Sea. So Epiphas went off and brought forth the demon, and both transported the pillar from Arabia. However, Having outwitted them because these two demons could have upset the whole world with one tip of the scales, I sealed them around on one side and the other and said, Keep watch on them carefully. Thus they have remained holding up the pillar in the air until this very day as a proof of the wisdom granted to me. The enormous pillar was suspended through the air, lifted up by the spirits, and thus from below the spirits appeared just like air lifting it up. When we looked intently, the lower part of the pillar became somewhat oblique, and so it is to this day. Then I interrogated the other spirit, the one who came up out of the sea with the pillar. Who are you? What are you called? And what is your activity? For I have heard many things about you. But the demon said, I, King Solomon, am called Abizethibu, and once sat in the first heaven, whose name is Ameluth. Therefore I am hostile, winged demon with one wing, plotting against every wind under the heavens. I was present at the time when Moses appeared before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, hardening his heart. I am the one whom Janus and Jambres, those who opposed Moses in Egypt, called to their aid. I am the adversary of Moses in performing wonders and signs. I therefore said to him, how is it that you are found in the Red Sea? He responded, During the time of the exodus of the sons of Israel, I gave Pharaoh pangs of anxiety and hardened the heart of him as well as of his subordinates. I caused them to pursue closely after the sons of Israel, and Pharaoh followed with me, and so did all the Egyptians. I was there at the time when we followed together. We all approached the Red Sea, then it happened that at that time, when the sons of Israel crossed over, the water turned back upon us and covered our company of the Egyptians. I was to be found there. I, too, was engulfed by the water, and I remained in the sea, being held down there by a pillar until Epiphas arrived. Next, I, Solomon, adjured him to hold up the pillar until the end. Then, under the direction of God, I adorned the temple of God in total beauty, and I was rejoicing and praising God. Now I took countless wives from every land and kingdom, 
I also took a journey to the kingdom of the Jebusites and saw a woman in their kingdom. And I fell madly in love with her and wanted her to be my wife in my harem. So I said to her, their priests, Give me this Shumanite, because I am madly in love with her. They replied, If you love our daughter, fall down before our gods, the great Raphan and Moloch, and take her. However, I did not want to worship their gods, so I said to them, I worship no foreign god. But they threatened violence against the maiden, saying, If you have the opportunity to go to the kingdom of Solomon, and say to him, I will not go to bed with you unless you become like my people, and take five locusts and sacrifice them in the name of Raphan and Molech. So because I loved the girl, she was in full bloom, and I was out of my senses, I accepted as nothing the custom of sacrificing the blood of locusts. I took them in my hands and sacrificed in the name of Raphan and Molech to idols, and I took the maiden to the palace of my, to the palace of my kingdom. So the Spirit of God departed from me that day on which my words became an idle talk. She convinced me to build temples of idols. As a result, I, wretched man that I am, carried out her advice, and the glory of God completely departed from me. My spirit was darkened, and I became a laughingstock to the idols and demons. For this reason I have written out this, my testament, in order that those who hear might pray about and pay attention to the last things, and not to the first things in order that they may finally find grace forever. Amen.